Hello again. We are uh, almost taking the leap and getting into chapter seven, but I wanted to pick up one little thing that was left over from chapter six, and that's where I referred to nonviolent moment as an epiphany. Uh, to remind you, a nonviolent moment is where there has been an interaction between, let's say, an, for example, an oppressor and a nonviolent resistance. And they work and work, they jostle, they negotiate with one another. And in the course of time, this almost always comes to a head. It comes to a crisis where their violence and our nonviolence are pitted against one another. For example, in the SALT campaign during the Indian freedom struggle. So a nonviolent moment will almost always become what I call an epiphany. That is, that nonviolent energy, which is resident in life, resident in nature, resident in our consciousness, suddenly comes forward. And I've quoted quite a few examples of that up to now in Search for a Nonviolent Future. The unfortunate thing is so far we haven't got our framework so that we can recognize these things and know them for what they are and build on them, which is what we're leading up to. So uh, today, as it happens, there are quite a few movements and conferences taking place on Beyond War. And they're capitalizing on the awareness that I mentioned in our last talk that people are beginning to realize that the war knee jerk violent response isn't working. But uh, even these conferences, I'm afraid people are not acknowledging how deeply embedded in our economic, political and emotional and entertainment systems war is and that they are going to have to do exactly these two things that I was talking about, which is get them to understand, connect the dots between, let's say, war in something like football or let me say the violence in something like football and the violence in war. Connect those dots, but simultaneously show them that there would be a nonviolent way to practice sports and a nonviolent way to do international relations. So that's what we're building up to. And uh, I mentioned in the beginning of chapter seven and a, a remarkable episode that was uh, carried out by uh, Mother Teresa. And I'm happy to say that now she is uh, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. And uh, that also in the Vatican, thanks to Pope Francis, all this stuff is brand new since Search for Nonviolent Future came out. The Vatican has actually conducted a conference to re-examine and clearly to reject the just war theory, which has been an intellectual prop for war fighting within Catholic social teaching for 1200 years. That is huge. And there's a billion Catholics in the world. And with that kind of spiritual authority to examine this system, which was, of course, deeply flawed and was used for many, many wars, which no one in their right mind would call just. Of course, people are not in their right mind when they talk about war anyway. But reexamining that system, uh, I think, is going to be a major help in disestablishing the entire war system. And I, I have some new thoughts to share with you on how to do that in our next talk.